Please stand. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. It is not ourselves that we proclaim. We proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For the same God who said, out of the darkness, let light shine, has caused his light to shine within us, to give the light of revelation, the revelation of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine, for, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in reciting the Fos Hilaron, found on page 112 of your Book of Common Prayer, or page 3 of your worship booklet. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper lights. We sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to praise thy happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the world.
Our service continues on page 355, 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 4 of your worship booklet. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to, to God, God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. collect of the nativity of our Lord can be found on page 212 of the Book of Common Prayer or at the bottom of page 4 in your worship booklet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our guest lector is Chris Odom. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a God, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea 
to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Occasionally with the gospel readings and with the scripture readings, we have the option to leave portions out. And that kind of happens. So I'm going to read the rest of this gospel to you because it's kind of important and it figures in my sermon. So if you'll indulge me, I'll read the next five verses. If you remember, the shepherds had just gotten there. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Most Tuesdays from 12.30 to 1 p.m., you can find me in a Zoom room with a group of priests from around central Arkansas doing a little sermon prep for the coming Sunday. Or in the case of this week, the coming Friday night, <laughs> Christmas Eve. The group begins by praying whatever the collect of the day will be, followed by the reading of the scripture or scriptures to be used by those who are actually doing the preaching. So this week, we sat there wondering how in the world we were going to find a fresh take on the oldest, best-known Christmas story ever. Some of us have been preaching Christmas Eve for many years, others not so much. However, that doesn't change the fact that most people can recite most of Luke's nativity story almost by heart. It's not easy to find something new and meaningful to say. You know you heard Linus's voice. <laughs> Thank you, Linus and Charles Schultz, for making it even more difficult to preach this story. I mean, it's all I can do not to read it in the King James, <laughs> because that's how I know it. Maybe that's the point. Maybe we don't need to hear something new and catchy. Maybe we just need to hear the good news. The UN Gelion, same news that the angels brought to the shepherds, that to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth 
and lying in a manger. We've been talking about Luke's gospel all through Advent, and we'll continue to talk about it this year. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that it continues to be all about the leveling of the playing field, a reversal of great proportions, a lifting up of the lowliest folks. The beginning of tonight's gospel reading is quite a bit of history related to the lofty Roman Empire, edicts and registrations, accountings, and who are you? Who do you belong to? Who's your family? In the South, we would say, who are your people? And as good and dutiful citizens, Joseph and Mary make the long journey to Bethlehem, the city of David, to take care of their business. They go to Bethlehem because Joseph was descended from David. But the good news of the Savior's impending birth doesn't come from anyone in the lofty and powerful Roman government. The good news brought by the angels of the Lord is given to the lowly shepherds. Not senators, not stockbrokers, not superheroes, just shepherds. And these shepherds are so overwhelmed by the angels' message that they immediately drop what they're doing, leave their flocks, and go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord had made known to them. And when they find Mary and Joseph and the baby, just as the angel foretold, the shepherds relay the angel's message to Mary and Joseph. These lowly shepherds become some of the first evangelists by sharing the good news that a Savior, the Messiah, is born. And the shepherds then return to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. A few minutes ago, I sarcastically thanked Charles Schultz for making this such a hard scripture to preach. In his classic animated film, A Charlie Brown Christmas, Linus always plays a shepherd. And he always has his trusty blue blanket for security, even fashioning it into a shepherd's head covering for the Christmas play. But there is one interesting moment in the Christmas pageant rehearsal that bears noticing. When Charlie Brown asks in anguish and frustration, isn't there anybody who can tell me what the true meaning of Christmas is all about? Linus steps to the center of the school stage, drops his beloved blue blanket, and recites in King James perfection the Christmas story from Luke. Did you hear what I said? Linus drops his security blanket to tell the good news. The shepherds dropped everything. Go and tell the good news that Christ is born a Savior. Like the real shepherds who dropped everything to go tell the good news, Linus drops his most beloved possession, the one thing he thinks will keep him safe, to tell the story of the Savior of the world. As we move into the new year, what can we drop to tell the story of the Savior? What can we put down to share the good news? Can we lay aside those things that we think keep us safe and secure to tell a story of real salvation? For me, that would involve laying aside my fears about things I cannot control and my frustration with feeling so out of control. It would involve being a lot more patient with those around me. It would involve a lot more work on gratitude rather than griping. 
Back in August, there was an article in the Atlantic magazine that speaks of something I think many of us feel. The title of the article is The Opposite of Toxic Positivity by Scott Harry Kaufman. He says, toxic positivity is a kind of denial of reality. That telling someone to stay positive, especially in the middle of this global crisis, is missing out on an opportunity for growth. It may even backfire and make them feel worse, especially if they think they can't be positive. Hoffman cites as the antidote to this toxic positivity an idea from Viktor Frankl, an existential humanist psychologist and Holocaust survivor. Find some time to read Man's Search for Meaning by him. Frankl's idea is one of not toxic positivity, but tragic optimism, which involves the search for meaning amid the inevitable tragedies of human existence. The research says people can grow in many ways from difficult times, including having a greater appreciation of one's life and relationships, increased compassion, altruism, purpose, greater use of personal strengths, even spiritual development. It's not the traumatic or tragic event that leads to growth. I know I'm really not thankful to still be in COVID tide, but rather how the event is processed. How can our views change as a result of difficult or tragic or fearful events? What meaning can we draw from these events now and after, if ever, they go away? And the article concludes with an interesting misconception about gratitude, that it is all about appreciating my life and my blessings in spite of the suffering of others. But true gratefulness or existential gratitude rejoices in the other. This gratefulness reflects back the goodness that one has received by creatively seeking opportunities for giving. This gratefulness is constantly on the lookout for hidden benefits and opportunities for growth in everything. A global pandemic, a grief or a loss, a struggle with illness. As the article says, Gratitude is not just a switch to turn on when things go well. It is also a light that shines in the darkness. My prayer for this year is that we can lay aside those things that distract us from one another. Those things that keep us from being our best selves. From living as Christ in the world. Let us go forth unencumbered by our fears and false security to tell the truth. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, that God's favor is for all people, that heaven and earth meet not in the halls of power, but in obscure, sometimes dark places. The light of the world has come to us all. Can we be modern day shepherds of the good news of God in Christ Jesus, even in the face of ongoing trouble and fear and frustration? I think we can. If we remember what the angel of the Lord said, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Amen.
are able. Join me in reciting the words of our faith that can be found in the Nicene Creed on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 8 of your worship booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of wind being with the Father. Through him all things were made. My sisters and brothers, in the peace of God, all the gifts we shall give and receive in these days are but small tokens of the gift that shines forth in God's word made flesh this night. From grateful hearts, let us intercede for all who find themselves longing for this deepest, truest gift, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for our governor, for Congress and the legislature, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our for our vestry, and for all the people of St. Peter's, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our for the community of Conway and Faulkner County, let us pray to the Lord. That the peace proclaimed by angels in the shepherd's field might be realized on every field of war and on every street of violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the child born to us this night find in our hearts warm welcome by our openness to the needs of the homeless and the hungry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that in this time of gift giving we might become more responsive to the abandoned, the despairing and the mourning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the rejoicing of this day might be a bond leading us to true communion of life and worship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the joy and consolation of the wonderful counselor might enliven all who are struck down by disease and illness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord this evening we lift up Lee, Kuehl and family, Noah, Shane, Terry, Thomas, Paige, Mason, Carly, Olivia, Austin, Joe, Nancy, Liz, Kay, Fred and Judy, Jason, Douglas, Chandler, Judy and Rick, Ryan, Trent, Jen and Chris, Lauren, Shannon and Anissa, Janet, Danielle, Barbara, the Hall family, Michelle, Dwayne and Barb, Ezra, Marianne, Virginia, Duncan and Christine, the West family, Judy and Dave, Sam and Tanya, Jolian for safe travel, Janice and Pat, Thatcher, Joe, baby Henry, Tupper, Chris, Bridget, Hal, Higgins, Judy, Mary and Dee, Stephen, Victoria, Tom, Beth, Carlos, and family, Amy, Mac and Catherine, Dorothy, Claire, Daniel, Sophie,
Chris and Thea, Robbie. Are there others? We pray in loving support for the Wisdom House, Mawaz, Natalie, Momina, Kansa, Rasha, and all those impacted by the conflict in Syria, for the people of Afghanistan. We continued prayer for Sarah Edmondson, Jackie Saroy, Carol Sue Greenwell, Eleanor Smith, Frank and Betty Jordan, and for our seminarian, Cody Blackman. That the blessed hope we celebrate this night might be the fulfillment of all who have gone before us in faith, let us pray to the Lord. This evening we give thanks for the people of St. Peter's and virtual and in-person visitors with us this week. We give thanks for Marilyn and Lynn Rishkovsky, Jay Rood and Stacy Jones, Bob and Dee Sanders. We give thanks for our Christmas meal volunteers and cooks. We give thanks for the Conway SDA Church. We give thanks for the Muslim Student Association at Hendricks. And we give thanks for the Reverend Hebert Ruiz and St. John the Apostle in Chichi Castanango, Guatemala. <coughs> we give thanks for St. Albans Stuttgart, St. Peter's Tollville, and all Episcopal Day Schools. We give thanks for St. Albans Stuttgart, St. Peter's Tollville, all Episcopal Day Schools. For those who have passed before us, we hold them in light this night of new birth. We pray for the departed Josephine, Esther, Dan, and Henry. God of darkness and silence, you have pierced the quiet of this night by the utterance of your word in our flesh. May our words of praise and petition be strong echoes of our Christmas word, so that all might come to the peace you promise in Jesus, who is the Lord and God this night and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to pass the peace safely. That, that's what I was afraid. I, I'm going to say it wasn't the incense. I'm going to say that was not the incense. Good evening, good evening, and Merry Christmas, everyone. Some announcements. I think first, though, I'd like to really appreciate our choir, our musicians, our singers, everything. It's really amazing, amazing. We, we are humbled and blessed by the amount of talent we have here, so thank you. And they, I know throughout the week they were working very hard, so because I could hear it from the office. Uh, well, thank you for coming to this beloved Christmas Eve service. It's probably the favorite for almost everyone in here. And we especially welcome any guests and visitors uh, and know that you are welcome here at St. Peter's. Uh, if you feel so called, we invite you to join us tomorrow, Christmas Day at 9 a.m. for a more meditative service featuring Right One for prayer book nerds. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful service. Uh, and then this Sunday, December 26th, there'll be one service at 11 o'clock, also here in the nave. So you have many ways to join us this, this uh, wonderful weekend. Tomorrow will be the Christmas t lunch distribution that we do for Meals on Wheels, as well as other uh, needy groups across the city. 
and uh, it starts immediately following this service over in the parish hall. And if you feel like assembling food, delivering food, uh, you know, just whatever you want to do, get supporting the people who are doing all the above, preparing the food, there's a lot that goes into it. So uh, we have 85 uh, people that we're distributing through Meals on Wheels and probably another 50 to 75 others. So it's, it's a great event. And thanks to everyone who helped prepare some of this. I mean, the stuff came in all day and it just looks beautiful. Our popular gospel reflection gatherings uh, continue on Sundays at 10 a.m. in the library. Come join to listen to what Jesus is saying us saying to us in that specific time and place. So that happens in the library, 10 o'clock before the Sunday service. Um, our, there are two epiphany services planned uh, for January 5th and 6th. We want to make sure that if you feel called to join or to ha be at an epiphany service uh, during the midweek, uh, the first week of January, that you have something here at St. Peter's. Uh, our Wednesday evening service will be a uh, sort of an epiphany eve service. And then we will have a noonday service on Thursday, January 6th. So consider joining us. Uh, importantly, there will be a lab walk, sort of a guided lab walk after each one of those. So if the lab has ever, labyrinth has ever interested you as a spiritual practice, there are some experts that will be there to talk to you about it, guide you along it, and deepen. It's, it's a new way to kind of create maybe a thin space uh, within your spiritual work. John Vanderslice will talk about his new book, New New at 10 o'clock on Sunday, January 9th. That will either be in the library or the multi-purpose room. And then the following Sunday at 10 o'clock, uh, we will begin our journey through the prayer book. It's where we learn the traditions and histories of, of this wonderful tradition, and we'll spend most of the year just going through it, starting on page one. A couple of additional announcements. Uh, I would like you to all just uh, lift up our dear Claire Lasardo in your prayer. She, 12.30 last night, went to the emergency room found out that she has an ulcer. She was in quite a bit of pain still this afternoon. Uh, so you won't be seeing the usual Claire with her funny head stuff and all that, uh, but do keep her uh, in your prayers. So she's, she's doing better. Uh, there is an error in the bulletin, uh, which I did. I take all responsibility. Uh, it uh, funnily is at, right at the end on page 15, it says we do the dismissal before the recessional. We don't do it that way. So you guys know that. Just in case, just in case. So, uh, and so we will we will start Holy Communion. I know there may be some some new faces in here or people who haven't uh, been, done communion with us since we've uh, come to the recent iteration of the way we're doing it. So, you will have ushers uh, on the wall over there, an usher there, and an usher here, and they will direct you to come up to the rail. And you're welcome to take any space on the rail. You can come up. You can kneel or you can stand, whichever you feel comfortable. If you would like to take the wafer, hold your hands out like this. Uh, if you, we are asking anyone who would like to take the, the wine to entink or dip into the wine. Uh, if you'd rather I do either one of those, that's fine too. Or if you'd rather just take the bread. Uh, if you'd rather have a blessing, come up, cross your arms, we'll give you a blessing. And gluten-free wafers are available. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer, or page 11 of your worship booklet. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. To the prophets and sages, you revealed their, your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open, the way, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate, celebrate his, his death, death and, resurrection and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Ruth, Esther, and Naomi, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us and deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, Lord, be known, known to us, us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And wherever you are on your journey of faith, know that you're welcome at Christ's table.
close communion prayer can be found at the bottom of page 14 or on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.